Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're gonna mill our first log on the sawmill since adding the Woodlander trailer. Now in theory, it should all be smooth sailing, and to this point, I've never had any problems with this sawmill. But this will be a little bit of a first because I've never used it on the trailer, and I don't really anticipate having any problems, but you never know till you try it. So, first thing I've gotta do is go up and get a log, and then we'll get started. I'm guessing this log weighs about a thousand pounds because my tractor was able to lift it but it couldn't really curl back any further with the weight out on the, the end of the forks so I'm estimating around a thousand pounds and I got this log and a couple more intentionally you might have seen me unload them with Paul Case the other day because I wanted some longer logs I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that pergola probably this week and I needed some two by sixes that are 14 foot long because I'm gonna make it 12 foot pergola. So I didn't have anything that long. I didn't wanna cut down any trees right now. So I just called him up and he brought me these. So we're gonna see how many two by sixes we can get out of this. this is, he brought me three logs and this is the smallest diameter of those three. I forgot to put my log leveling jack in there before the log. Hopefully it'll still slide in. I can tell you it has more of a shaky feel to it because it's just setting on those jacks it wobbles whereas my stand was rock solid but I mean that's a trade-off that there's no way to have have this trailer really be as solid in my mind as having a full stand under it and I guess the other part of that is does it really matter does it hurt anything I guess I will go ahead and take this fender off this side The idea behind these being that you only use them when you're transporting. Talking about the trade-offs, you might lose a little bit of stability. One of the things you gain is some adjustability of height. I could have this easily six inches lower than it is, and I could have it probably four inches higher. And it kind of lets you set where you want to work from and what's comfortable for the crank handle and things like that. Right now I've got rust on my blade, and I've never had that before because I've never left my mill outside and I left it out here for almost a week now, and it's rained. And that's not my intention. I'm going to keep this mill covered for its whole life. But in the middle of building out this trailer, when it I didn't finish and then it rained, I didn't have a whole lot of options, I guess. I would also say it's not that big a deal if we damage this blade by, or if it doesn't perform well because we let it get rust on it because you only get a handful of logs out of every blade and I've done a few logs out of this blade already. We're turning smooth and it's tracking fine so I guess we'll go ahead and give her a shot. Now this is an interesting surprise to me because I'm pretty sure that other people I've watched use their mill outside. Right now I can see the laser clear as day on my arm as I come back this way, I see it, I see it, I see it. Oh, I can just barely make it out on the log. It is hard to see. So the result there is the laser's amazing in my shop, even with those bright, bright high bay lights on. That laser works great. Out here in the sunlight, it's not picking up very well. Now I guess we'll find out how the engine likes being rained on. Maybe I should go ahead and get a cover just in case I take it on location 
and I leave it there for say a week because we've got a lot of trees might be still nice to have a cover okay choke on Well, I'd say that went pretty smooth. There were a couple times where it hung up just a little bit. I felt a catch in the in the movement, and I wasn't sure if maybe there was something that was you know blocking the rollers or something. I walked around and checked it out, and then it was fine. So no problem so far. Let's get this rolled over and finish it off. Hey, don't lean your camp hook up against the rail. Okay, it's seven inches tall and eight inches wide. And I think I want two by sixes out of this. So we're gonna take an inch off the top so that our six inch dimension is, is the vertical dimension right now. And then we'll make two inch minus saw kerf boards. So an inch and seven eighths will dry to an inch and three quarters, a little less. So we'll go ahead We'll take an inch off the top, then we'll make the rest of our cuts. Okay, so there is a little bit of a problem, and I noticed it just a little bit before turning, and I thought, well, you know, maybe this this log just had some curl in it, because you can sometimes make a cut and have the wood kind of spring up, but we're a little bit out of level on the mill. Now, I checked it whenever I built it, and everything looked level both directions, but right now it's not. It's quite a bit higher at this end which shouldn't make that much difference as long as it's consistent or as you're flat. So if you're perfectly flat but at an angle, it shouldn't really hurt as much. But if you're twisted or, or lower in the middle or something like that or higher in the middle, then that would make a big difference. What we've got right now is the mill is higher on this end than it is that end. And my log, my cant, 
is coming off the deck at that end, maybe on a quarter of an inch or maybe a little bit more. Let's just, I'll show you. So that's a little problematic where you might have seen a gap on some of the other bunks. That was just where there was still some sapwood on the edge of the cant or a little bit of an actual bark spot or something. I think the rest of them all have pressure on the cant, but that last bunk doesn't. So after I finish my cuts, I'll have to look at that and see if I can figure out what's going on. And then we'll just have to continue experimenting with it as we continue to use the mill of how how critical that leveling is how far we are off things like that hopefully it doesn't affect our lumber too much because what i need isn't really 14 feet and this log is a little over 14 feet so if we have some taper towards the end we can probably just cut that end off all right i'm skipping ahead a little bit in the video just to show something here i've done this on all the bunks if I put the level flat on the bunk, then it, the other end of it's touching the next bunk. This one has that gap in it. I just didn't get this leveled. That's all it is. I need to raise the jacks on this end a little bit more. So next time I'll be a little more careful in how I do things. I would say this right here is like a veneer. You're a quarter of an inch thick and it's consistent all the way down. So I don't think we have a major problem, but it's gonna drive me crazy that the end of the log wasn't setting on the bunk. Well, I was going for two by six and I was a little afraid to take it right to six because I didn't know how much we were losing on that bow. So this is actually a true two inch by about six and a half. And I don't know, I'll either make the other one six and a half because I don't have a plan for this. I'm just building something. Or when I'm done, I'll put all of them up here and then rip across the top of all of them once I've worked the bugs out of that. For now, I've got a lot of mowing and weed eating to do. So I'm gonna see if I can get a good bit of that knocked down today, but I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.